Hey everybody, it's Chris with Xano, and today I'm gonna to show you how you can add a comment section to your blog inside of Webflow. Now, if you're new here, you're not familiar with Xano, you're not really sure what we're all about, what we offer is a no-code solution to build a backend for your website or application. Where Webflow is your front end, that's where you're doing all of your designing, that's where you're handling the user experience. The back end is what handles everything once your user clicks that submit button. That's a very high level example of what we can offer, but just know that we are able to greatly expand the possibilities of what you can do inside of your favorite front end. Today, we're going to be looking at blog comments in Webflow. Now, the really cool thing about this example is it's easily adaptable to handle things like e-commerce product reviews. Essentially, anytime you want your users to submit a form and have that form data appear on your page without a page refresh, that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna give you a quick demo. I'm gonna show it to you in action. We're gonna go over how it works and then I will show you how to implement it. All the resources that you need will be down in the description below. So let's get started. Okay, so we are in Webflow. This is my sample blog that I've built to show you how this works. We are using the Webflow CMS with just some sample blog data today. And you can see at the bottom of the page, we have our form, which is where users will submit comments. And then down here, we have this grid, which is where all of our comments will live. Let's go ahead and preview this page. And you can see we have a couple of comments here and then our form. Now let's go ahead and add a new comment. My name is Chris and I'm gonna say, this is so awesome. And I'm going to click submit. And you can see we have our new comment right at the top. Very cool. So there's really a couple of different things happening here. In Webflow, it is all handled by some custom JavaScript, which we've provided down in the description for you. I won't be going too in depth on how this code works, but essentially what's happening here is when the page loads, we call an API that we've built in Xano to get all of the comments. And then what's happening is this code is reading this element on our page, this sample card, so it knows how to style those comments as it grabs them. So it takes the comment data, it inserts it into the appropriate element, and then renders it on the page. When we submit a comment, what's happening is we are stopping Webflow's handling of that form completely. So Webflow is not touching this at all. It is not a webhook, so it will not count against your form submission limit. It's reading the form data, serializing it, and then sending it to Xano to store inside of our database. So let's take a look at what's happening inside of Xano when we submit a comment. We have two tables that we're using for this example today. The first one is our blog posts table and our comments table. The blog posts table contains the slugs for our blog posts. That's usually just the title of the post unless you've defined it manually. It doesn't really matter for this example as long as it's there. And it's also storing the ID of the comment that lives in our comment table. That's happening with a table reference field that is also formatted as a list. So you can see we have a couple of blog post slugs here, and then we have the comments that belong to that blog post. Now our comments table just has our comments in it. It has the author and the comment itself. When we click the submit button in Webflow, we're calling one of our API endpoints that we've built in Xano. The endpoint that we're calling is this post comments. So we're posting, we're sending data to Xano to add to our database. So let me click on this. I'm gonna go through what we have set up here. In the first section, we have our inputs. We have the author, the comment, and the slug, so that's the identifier of the blog post. And what's happening in our function stack, which is where all of our logic lives, we're checking to see if we already have a record stored for that blog post. And we're storing that as a true or false value in a variable called post exists. You can see we are identifying whether or not we have that blog post by the slug, which we've collected from Webflow in our inputs. And then all we're doing is we're adding the comment to the comments table. We're taking the author and the comment, again, from our inputs. This is the data that we get from Webflow. And we're adding it to the comments table. And in our third step, we're looking at that post exists variable to see if that's true or false. And depending on that result, we're gonna do a couple of different things. If that variable has a value of true, what we're doing is we are getting the record that exists from the blog posts table, and we're doing that so we can get the list of existing comments and we can add to that. 
again, we're using the slug as our identifier to get that single record. And then we are editing that record. And we are using a push filter, which allows you to take a value and place it on the end of an existing array. So we're taking the existing array of comment IDs and we're adding the new comment ID to that array. Now, if this value is false, if we don't have this blog post stored inside of our database, all we're doing is we are adding a new record to the database. And again, we're using push here to add that comments ID to the array. Really the only difference is this time it just starts empty. So now let's take a look at the endpoint that's actually sending those blog comments to Webflow. That's going to be this one right here. That's just called get comments. It is querying all of the records from our comments table. So in our inputs, all we have is the slug for the post. So we only get the comments that we want for that specific blog post. And then what we're doing is we're getting the record that matches that slug from our blog posts table. So we're using that slug to look up the blog post and to get the IDs of the comments associated with that. And then we're using those IDs to query the comments table. So we only get the comments that we need. And then we're doing a little bit of formatting on the date to make sure that it's in a human readable format. In Xano, timestamps are stored in what's called a Unix epoch format, which means it's stored in milliseconds. And we just want to convert that to a day, a month, and a year. We're looping through each of those comments and we're updating those one at a time with the format timestamp filter to change that into a day, month, and year. So when we refresh the page, we're calling the get comments API to display these. When we are submitting a new comment, we're calling that post comment. And then we're also calling the get comments again. So we have an updated list. So now that you've seen how this works, I'm going to show you how to actually implement it. Go ahead and head down to the description, leave a like while you're down there. We really appreciate it and get the link for the custom code that you'll need to insert into Webflow. I'm going to start a new Webflow project here. I'm going to call it my awesome blog. Let's go into the CMS. Let's go to our blog posts and we've already got some sample data here. So that's good. We are ready to go. Now let's take a look at the blog posts template page. This is where we're going to be adding our custom code so it can immediately automatically populate to every and any blog post we will have on this site. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to actually add the form to submit a comment. Now for this, I'm just going to use Webflow's native forms. You can use a custom coded form if you want. It's totally up to you. Let's go ahead and add a new section. And we'll move that right under our blog post and let's add a form block. I'm just going to give this a set width here. Go ahead and center this. So we'll keep the name field in here. I'm going to change the ID of this to author and this field right here. I'm going to change the label to comment. Now for our submit button, the first thing we need to do is we need to change this to a post. And then we need to add an action. So the action is going to be our endpoint URL from Xano. That's going to be our post comment endpoint. So let's go back to Xano. And we're going to click this button right here that says copy endpoint link. And we're going to paste that right in there. And now let's add the grid that will hold all of our comments. I'm going to add another section. I'm going to put it right below my form. And in this section, I'm going to place a grid. And I'm going to give this grid an ID of grid comments. Let's go ahead and edit this grid and get rid of that second column. And then we will give this a max width as well. Let's say 700. And we will center this. Perfect. Okay. Now we need to add a div. We're going to give this a class of sample style. And in here, we're going to add a paragraph. This is going to contain our comments. I'm also going to add another div block. And inside this div block, I'm going to add a heading three. That's going to be our author. And I'm also going to add a heading five, and that's going to be our date. Now, the last thing we need to do for the sample card is we just need to hide it so it doesn't show up on the page. We just need that as a reference for our custom code to know how to style the comments. We don't need to see that on the page though. So now that we've added our form to actually submit the comments, and we've also set up the template so our JavaScript code knows how to populate those comments, all we really have to do is add the custom code to the page. So let's go to our page settings. 
I'm going to go over here. This link is in the description for all the custom code that you need. I'm going to click this button right here that says copy file contents. I'm going to go back over to Webflow and I'm going to paste this in the before body tag section. Now, if you scroll up to the top of the custom code, you can see this Xano URL. What we're doing is we're defining the URL of our endpoint that actually gets the comments so the rest of our code can utilize that. Now, I already have my endpoint URL here, but what you're going to do is I'm actually just going to clear that out. I'm going to go to my Git Comments API endpoint, and I'm just going to click this little Copy Endpoint Link button here. I'm going to go back to Webflow, and I'm just going to paste this right in there. Simple as that. That will typically be the only change that you need to make to the code for this to work. Now, if we were going to, say, adapt this to product reviews, I'm not going to go super in-depth on that today, but essentially you'll probably have a different endpoint URL for product reviews to actually get those product reviews. And then we would also want to modify potentially this section of code here that defines the elements that our sample card contains. So we have our H3, we have our paragraph, and then we have this one defined as T, which is the H5 that contains the dates that the comment was posted. So you could have an image here, essentially whatever you like, as long as it's coming through that endpoint, that Git comments or Git product reviews endpoint that you set up, you would just define that here. Make sure to click the save button. So to summarize everything pretty quickly, we've built our form. We've made sure that the field is named author and we've made sure the type is plain as well as the comment field. We have the name of comment and we have the type of plain. We have our sample style here that's fully defined, ready to go. We are going to want to move this outside of that grid. We've added our custom code. We've added our endpoint URL into the custom code right here at the top. And we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and publish this and let's open it up. So you can see we have our blog post and we have our form. Now let's, uh, let's go ahead and leave a comment. I'm going to say my name is Chris. I'm going to say it works with an exclamation point and click submit. And you can see there's our comment. Simple as that. Now let's take a look inside Xano. Let's look at our blog posts. You can see we now have the entry for that blog post and we have our new comment. Looks like that's ID number 17. So let's go to our comments table. And you can see we have our new comment right there inside Xano. And we've done all of this without using webhooks. So you don't have to worry about your form submission limit in Webflow. It just works. Really cool. I really hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, definitely let us know in the comments below. You can also reach out to us via support chat inside Xano or on the Xano community. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.